So the bow that the Romans used because it was efficient, the Huns buried with their leaders. This bow was an expression of Hun identity. The golden bow wasn't even functional. It represented the power and status of its owner. The Huns didn't leave us towns or cities. They carried and buried their culture with them. The Huns had culture and skill, but to achieve their military success, they must also have had discipline and dedication. But what happened to Attila and his empire? With lightning strikes from their base in Hungary, they sacked many of the major cities of the Roman Empire. But to sustain their empire, they needed grass. In Hungary, they ran out of step. Then they vanished. Some must have changed their way of life and become absorbed into peasant society. Others must have returned to the east. But the biggest secret of these early Dark Ages lies with the people who didn't destroy a city and who weren't nomadic warriors, a people who conquered and then settled. They lived just like the Romans and left behind a glorious legacy, one which remained deliberately hidden for nearly 1,500 years. This is Ravenna in northern Italy. Today, it's a quiet, picturesque city celebrated for its Byzantine legacy, the art and architecture created by the Eastern Roman Empire. Or was it? In fact, much of the glory of Ravenna is not Roman at all, but barbarian. Just as the Vandals had crossed over the Rhine, so another group, the Goths, had been pushed into the empire by the Huns. Here in Ravenna, the Goths took over the last capital of the Western Roman Empire. For 33 years under their king, Theodoric, it was the equal of any Roman capital. Theodoric renovated and reformed its institutions, improved and enhanced its splendor, and in a few short years created one of the wonders of the age. This would have been like walking through heaven's gates. If this had been an age of darkness, then here, without doubt, was a cathedral of light. This is Santa Polinare Nuovo, built by Theodoric nearly 1,500 years ago, one of the brightest jewels of the Dark Ages. I'd like you to look at the uh, mosaics from this position. You can see that the background is shining, is reflecting the light from the windows because it was made of uh, glass cubes and gold uh, cubes. And the robes of the saints are dull, are opaque, because they were made using marble cubes, uh, so as to give the impression of wool of textiles. These works were commissioned by Theodoric, the Gothic king. Yet most visitors today think they are Roman or Byzantine mosaics. Why should that be? Is it because we have all been conditioned to assume that work of this quality must be Roman? Perhaps there are other reasons. As I looked more closely, I began to wonder, why are there so many mosaic curtains in a scene of such splendor? And what do these hands, unattached to any bodies, signify? Could I learn the answers to these barbarian riddles in modern Ravenna? 
Mosaics are still being produced here in exactly the same way as they were in the Dark Ages. Only highly skilled workers could produce glass and marble with the desired effects of scattering or absorbing light. To a barbarian immigrant, the effect of turning tiny pieces like this into works of art must have seemed magical. Can I cut one? Can I cut you? Yes, me. Yes, if you want. <laughs> okay. Just a little. Okay. Can you use this or not? Yes, it's a, yes, it's I good use. Shape. Uh, <laughs> I use. Goes here. Uh, <laughs> no, here. No? It's better here. Oh, no, okay. Okay. These pieces, called tesserae, are cut and placed on a pattern, a pattern which sometimes reveals itself only at a distance. Gold mosaic was made by placing gold leaf between layers of clear... It's a slow, costly and very secretive art, and it was only commissioned by the rich and powerful. Later rulers were no exception. Here's a copy of the famous portrait of Justinian, the Roman Byzantine emperor who ruled Ravenna after Theodoric. In Santa Polinare, I wanted to see whether the mystery of the curtains was any clearer. I realize now that they reflect so much work that they must have had a very deliberate purpose. What were they supposed to represent? This part of the mosaic that shows you the royal palace, all this mosaic was made and commissioned by Theodoric. This mosaic has been changed, altered. We could say that it has been vandalized by uh, the Byzantines because some images have been destroyed. Those images that had portrayed Theodoric, members of his court, members of his uh, clergy, and that stood between the columns, now they have been replaced with curtains. But you can still see the hands uh, here. There is one hand here, another one here, another one here and another hand here, and another hand here. And you can still see the halos here of the heads that have disappeared. All these elements uh, tell us that previous images have been destroyed. It was an act of censorship, we could say. Those who succeed